I am done. I can't go on. I am done trying. It is too much for me. Have you ever said phrases like these before? These are the words of someone who is exhausted and doesn't have anything left to give. We utter phrases like this when, confronted with our limitations, we feel defeated. We use these words when we have tried everything we can do, and it just doesn't seem to be enough. In our Old Testament reading today, Elijah finds himself in such a moment. As we reflect on the text, we can recognize that we have had our own Elijah moments as well. Maybe you are in the middle of your Elijah moment right now, exhausted and beaten down by your own sins, confronted by your own limitations. All your effort is expended pursuing the various struggles and goals of life, and you have nothing left to give. All you want to do is lie down and close your eyes and forget about it all. Maybe you have gone through a time like this in the past and have said these exact phrases. Some of you may be blessed to not have had an Elijah moment. If that is the case, you should listen well, because you will. Even though moments like this seem to be the last place you want to find yourself, our reading today from 1 Kings is actually of one of sweet comfort. Instead of this moment of exhaustion, failure, and suffering becoming a moment of despair, we see that God's mercy reigns in the lowest of human lows. That he doesn't abandon us in these Elijah moments. Instead, these become unexpected Sabbaths. Times of rest that overtake us when we lack the strength to carry on. In these moments, God sends his messenger to give us the things we need to survive and recover. When you hear the word Sabbath, it probably suggests Sunday morning, church, rest, and worship. This is good and true, but the kind of Sabbath we are talking about today doesn't seem to fit our usual mold. The Sunday Sabbath is a planned one. It is one we are invited into at a particular time and place. The Sabbath we are talking about today is not one we come to at a planned time or place. It is instead when Sabbath rest overtakes us. It is when our own limitations, whether of mind, body, or spirit, force us to rest. Despite this difference, it is still a Sabbath because it contains the same core thing that makes Sunday's, Sunday morning's divine service a Sabbath. It contains the gracious provision of God with what we need. For many of us, it may have been a long time since we have read the story of Elijah in 1 Kings, so let's put this Elijah moment into the context. The book of 1 Kings begins with the end of David's reign in 970 BC. After the reign of Solomon, David's son, the kingdom of Israel gets divided into two between the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Today's account in chapter 19 takes place about 100 years after the death of King David when Elijah is called to be the prophet of God to the northern kingdom of Israel. At this time, Israel was being ruled by a wicked king named Ahab. Ahab is introduced in 1 Kings 16.29, and the very next verse describes him this way. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. However, you may be more familiar with his infamous wife, Jezebel. Then comes the story you may have heard in Sunday school involving Elijah. When he confronts the prophets of Baal and Asherah, the gods of the country Jezebel is from, who are being worshiped instead of Yahweh, and God burns Elijah's altar with fire from heaven so that even after he doused the altar with water, it was burned up completely. Even the stones were burned to nothing. After this amazing display of power from God, the kind of display we pray for when we are doubting, what should Elijah fear? He has confronted the prophets of the false gods and this wicked king, and the Lord has defeated them. 
Yet in our reading today, Elijah is in such a desperate situation. How? Well, Jezebel sends a messenger with a threat to kill him in the same way he killed the false prophets. And he flees in fear into the wilderness. And here we get to the Elijah moment from 1 Kings 19. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. Elijah has reached the end of his rope. He is in despair that he, the mighty prophet of God, is afraid. He faced down all these trials and saw great signs of God's power, and yet he has now fled in fear of his life from the threat of the queen. The image he had of himself didn't match what he now saw. He wasn't this faithful and fearless prophet after all. Instead, he was ashamed of his fear. It was the same fear that led his fathers away from their worship of God in the first place. In his despair, he wants to share their fate. Have you had a similar experience? Not with the heavenly fire, the wicked kings, the death threats, but facing your failures or limitations and being overcome by them. When the image you have of yourself is exposed as fraudulent and the truth is shameful, not faithful and fearless, but fearful and faithless. Afraid that you might need help. Afraid that you aren't able to overcome your weaknesses. Afraid that you aren't enough. Maybe your Elijah moment came from an unexpected and serious medical diagnosis. You now must have life-changing surgery. Or the doctors are giving me months left to live. Or the frustrations and disability of a painful and difficult recovery when you couldn't even do basic life tasks without assistance. So much for being strong and independent. Maybe your Elijah moment came after trying so hard to control everything and keep all those plates spinning. You're working hard to make money so you can give your family the things they need. You're reading all the right books to learn how to better be better wives or husbands better parents or neighbors. You're working hard to raise your kids to be virtuous and good disciples of Jesus. Then your hypocrisy and failure are exposed. You aren't as holy as you thought you were. You caught yourself running away from these responsibilities because they were too much. You find that you taught your children something less than what you had intended. Maybe your Elijah moment struck tragically. It didn't have to do with your own failures, but the pervasive corruption of sin. Loved ones dying at young ages, or suddenly without warning. Maybe not just one person, but several close and important people are all of a sudden gone, and you're left asking why. Why so many strong blows in such a short time? Why then? I can't take it. I am done. What's the point, we say? It is enough, Elijah says. Here we are with Elijah in this moment. What now? Well, this isn't the end of Elijah's life. His exhaustion and despair are dealt with because God is not silent or far away in moments like these. What happened to Elijah? He doesn't have anything else he can do, so he sleeps. While he is sleeping, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. Let Elijah's unexpected Sabbath begin. God is providing what Elijah needs in his moment of despair. He needs to be taken care of. He needs rest and nourishment. This whole thing started with a messenger from the queen bringing threats of death. 
It ends with messengers from God bringing the things of life. The angel of the Lord comes a second time and brings food and water. And the angel says this to Elijah, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. The journey is too great for you. You aren't as amazing as you had hoped. You can't do everything you need to be able to do. The journey is too great for you, but I am here. I will help you and give you what you need for the journey. We are the same. Often when we reach our Elijah moments, it is because we need to be taken care of. Unlike Elijah, we aren't called to be prophets of God. He instead has called us to be his disciples. But exactly like Elijah, we fail at doing it according to his will. The journey is too great for us. So what does God do when we have these moments? He, through his gracious provision, turns them into unexpected Sabbaths. Rest. Receive. Let God take care of you this morning. He will give you what you need for the journey. Today, he gives you his son's word and faith to believe it. Today, he gives the forgiveness of sins. Today, he gives you all you need. In the name of Jesus, amen.